to understand the context of this descent in the schizophrenic process, please see my earlier autobiographical videos on my dissociative state, starting with my childhood trauma at age five with shame and quasi-sexual abuse, my seeking sexual abuse, failure to seek intimacy with a friend, ED failure, failure being submissive with homosexuals, 18 years old, I had success with a passing transsexual, and I had the lowest average in my high school to win a Regent scholarship, dropped out of Hunter College, returned to school after one year, saw a shrink, and came into successful heterosexual behavior. And we pick up the story in 1968. I was 21. Found uh, a cheap apartment in Greenwich Village in the East Village, which was a cool place to live in the late 60s. Found a stripper girlfriend who was a knockout. Suddenly I'm having sex with her seven times a day. I had taken LSD with Timothy Leary. And I was, looked at, I was looked at as a cool guy. Now, I never thought of myself as a cool guy. I was anxious, incipient schizophrenic, or simply so filled up with on-stage anxiety all the time, I never thought of myself as anything compared to other people. Um, I had a scholarship, a motorcycle, a good-looking live-in girlfriend, a place in Greenwich Village, and I had stumbled upon a kilo connection for pot out of Mexico. And I didn't do it for the money, it was just for the panache, and I had great tickets to Jimi Hendrix and the Doors and Cream, and I began to get good grades. And guess what? I ran into my KFED, which you can find on page 359 of the in Interpersonal Theory of Psychiatry. As I have noted briefly before, these situations may be accompanied either by such fascination, such such fascination. that the person, despite dreadful feelings, cannot seem to avoid being entangled with this unpleasant person who has taken advantage of him. See, when I say my KFED, And I found that, let's say with other people, if I was sitting around, and people usually made me nervous. And if somebody came over and I, I was, didn't want to be bothered, I'd say, oh, well, I'm just, I got to do a little studying and then get back to this class, or I got to do some reading and then I'm going to leave. And they'd get the hint and walk away. Well, this other guy didn't get, wouldn't take the hint, and he began to hang around me. And he began to have his ideas about what we should do, and gradually his ideas began to overwhelm my ideas about what I should do. And so he began to have this effect on me, and I was constantly like giving in to go along with his ideas of what he wanted to do or where he wanted to go. And I had been relating to him how on this LSD experience I felt that my girlfriend, my live-in girlfriend, had kind of betrayed me. And he got into this and then as I was thinking about what had gone on during the LSD experience, he said to me, do you ever get into that ESP stuff? And I had this sudden impression in my mind that he was seeing into everything I was talking about in a very, very deep way. And that when he said ESP, he was talking about his ability to see what was going on in my mind. And this was a very dangerous thing to start believing in. And I found when I was around him, I took a very kind of subservient position in a personality way. You know, it wasn't like he could snap his finger and have me go run off and get him a can of soda. But it was, when we spoke, it was always he was the more dominant, insightful person. And uh, I began to be embarrassed to, at the idea of him being around my girlfriend and me because I was embarrassed for myself to act like that in front of my girlfriend. So I gradually, I think this helped me to get rid of my girlfriend, which was a terrible mistake. And after I did, I grabbed hold, I was a good looking young guy, and, and I 
I got a hold of this young girl who was just beautiful and pretty and honest and turned out she was a virgin and I got her pregnant and I abortions were illegal in those days and after she had the abortion at this uptown doctor we got her back she and her sister and me we took her back to my apartment in Brooklyn and the sister said well maybe and she went to sleep and uh, she was all on drugs the the girl who had just had the abortion and her sister gives me a twenty dollar bill says well maybe you should go get some pizza so when she wakes up she'll have something to eat so I walked over the pizza place and I called this guy who was like my K-Fed and he convinced me to come uptown to meet him and I was on this double dose, I forgot to tell you, I had taken a double dose of, in those days we called it STP, but the real chemical name is DOM and you can look it up in Shulgin's Pickel. But anyway, I was on this like double dose of it while I was talking to him. And the next thing I know, I'm on this train on the way uptown instead of getting the pizza and going back to the girl. And I remember thinking, what am I doing? And it was like I was asleep, but I was awake. And when I got up to his uptown apartment, there were other kids from the college there, kids I knew who were considered cool guys. And one of them says, hey, what's going on? And I start telling him what's going on. And he says to me, well, what are you doing here? And suddenly that penetrated all my sleepiness, so to speak, my, my daze, my fugue state, as Sullivan would call it. I turned towards Michael and I saw under the, uh, under the, the effects of the DOM, I saw him transform into this controlling, ugly, bestial spirit. And then, of course, your mind comes back in and says, oh, no, that's just a hallucination. But in reality, that's just what it was. And instead of running out and going back to the girl, I stayed another few minutes burning in the awareness of humiliation. They had let him, let him control me. And what I had lost as a man, as a human being, forget about a gender, I had left this girl who was depending on me, who I had gotten pregnant and helped with a abortion, I had just abandoned her at the whim of this guy. And as I was burning in that humiliation, as that awareness was coming into my mind, my ego couldn't handle it, my personality started to break down, and there were two of these guys who were in the apartment who were over by the window looking down, because we were up on the fifth floor or something. And one said to the other, or at least I believe they said to each other, look at that long leash down there the guy has on that dog. And the other guy responded with, good looking dog. And the thoughts came to me that they were talking about me. The long leash was this K-Fed of mine who had pulled me all the way from Brooklyn. And the good looking dog was the fact that I, I was suddenly aware of the fact that they and they looked at me as a cool guy in the college. And I left. I didn't know how to respond to that. I thought I should respond to that on some kind of equal level, you know, as if they were conversing with me. When it was all audio hallucinations in my mind. And when I left that apartment, I continued to experience that kind of hallucinatory interchange with the people around me even when they were strangers and that is the entrance into psychosis that can be brought to you when you let somebody else bring you to an emotional state that's hypnotic and we can see that here in this celebrity who is totally also in a sleep while awake state